All right. Wow. It is telling the state of our industry that the burnout talk is full. <laughs> All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Josh Michaels, uh, and I'm one of the founders for B-Side Seattle, and I also do things in computers. Today, I want to talk about burnout and how we can survive, and not just survive, but try to thrive in these high-stress environments that we live and work in. A little bit about me. Um, anything you hear today is not the voice of my employer, all right? Yes, boss, I'm sorry. Um, I am an executive director of risk investigations for a large financial institution. Uh, I run the security floor operations at DEF CON, i.e. the bomb threat last year. Uh, I was an MSP SOC architect. Uh, the PNW Rangers are a conflict de-escalation team for Burning Man. I like to build organizations, make pizza, and uh, I'm an advocate for burnout. For burnout. You know when your friends are in the front row and you're just like, it's got a laser. <laughs> so when I say burnout advocate, um, I have gone to the hospital thanks to our industry. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I had my first panic attack in my life years ago in a building not far from here. It sucks. And recovering from that sucks. So I want to talk about how do we avoid or how do we still, because unless you want to leave the industry and go someplace a little less stressful, uh, which is a valid choice, we got to figure out how to work with it. What's burnout? This is the definition we're going to work with today. Um, I try to reference all my slides if I use any sort of uh, references, so you can find them at the bottom. But According to Psychology Today, it's the exhaustion brought on by prolonged or repeated, and I actually say prolonged and repeated stresses. So stress is not inherently bad. When you go to the gym, what are you doing to your body? Stressing it, yeah. You do it right, and your body gets stronger. Uh, but if you go to the gym every day, and you beat up your body 18 hours a day in the gym, you are going to kill yourself. When we talk about stress, we talk about this in terms of, and I refer to the stress cycle. Uh, Dr. Emily Nagoski uh, has written uh, one of the epitome books on burnout. I highly recommend reading it through. Stress for us uh, happens in, you know, the stressor starts. And I'm going to use a, 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 a wilderness example. So your stressor starts. Is that a lion I see there? It's a lion. Uh, what do I do? All right, fight or flight. So what's happened now? My body, my energy is coming up. I'm like, okay, I got a line. What am I going to do? I'm going to fight this thing or I'm going to run. No, I'm not going to fight the thing. I'm going to pet the thing because it's a cat. But, or I'm going to run. Or I'm going to freeze because we do accept freeze is a, something that happens. We fight, right? We fight, fight over life. We win. Lion's done. Sweet. Lion be gone. And then... We return back to our village, we return back to our space, we get nap time, we get our chance for that energy to come back. Come back down, right? That stress cycle to finish through. It's great. We had a stressor, took care of it, went home, had some ice cream, done. Now the cybersecurity version. Um, who here works for Microsoft? Who here has been on FSB the last six months? Is that a breach? Is that a breach? It's a breach? Oh, what's that signal? Okay, I got another signal. Oh my God, is that another Russian? Okay, no, it's not a Russian. It's a guy from Cuba who thinks it's a Russian. Oh my God. Okay, we got to look at that. Now what are we going to do? Okay, we got to get them out of here. We got to, you know, eva evacuate them out of the environment. Okay, but wait, there's another signal. We're going to go back to the start and do that again. No. Okay. Wait, we figured it out. It's not a brief, but wait, there's another signal. And we don't get that recovery period. This is responder state. We are responding and we feel responsible and accountable for the safety of our environments and those we protect. I know if you look around the room, 
or maybe in a mirror, you will find people who have a hard time saying no to helping. I mean, it's one of the things that makes me proud to work in this industry. We are an industry of helpers. But helpers need help too. We gotta get out of this stress cycle, or at least acknowledge that it exists and plan for it. What can we do about it? I've split it up into two ways. Personal, like what can we do? We're here, right? You are, um, you manifest your own destiny. Great, what can we do? And then organizationally, so I built teams uh, multiple times in my career and you know, as an organizational leader, important for me to acknowledge and to understand the signals of you know, my teams are giving me. Um, the organizational is a whole topic for another day. So today, I'm just gonna talk on the personal side. First off, know your signals. Signals of burnout are just like any other signal of mental health. There's no, there's a DSM, uh, for those who are used, uh, familiar with this space, DSM is how therapists will uh, diagnose, right? But there's no DSM of signals for uh, burnout. Some common signals, fatigue, extreme fatigue, feeling the need or the want to randomly take sick days, feeling the need to work harder. It sounds weird, right? Like, oh man, I'm burnt out. But if I work harder today, tomorrow will be better, right? And then what do we do? We'll work harder the next day and the next day. And now we're on 14 hour days. Changes in your eating habits. Um, I know my body. My body, when I'm in stress and fatigue, goes back to making pizza. It, you know, doesn't necessarily stay on those good eating habits that I've established over my life. Changes in your routine. So if your routine is to go to the gym every day and you're not, what's changed? What's going on? Take that moment, take that introspection, figure out like, is it just I'm busy? Why am I busy? Those summarize into kind of the self-care category, right? When we talk about personal burnout and like personal signals, Unfortunately, one of the, the most common signals is you stop caring about yourself because you're so busy about caring about others and you're so ingrained in, if I just do this one more thing, it's going to get better, I promise. You start making promises to yourself. <coughs> know your signals, write them down. It sounds cheesy, but take that moment to introspect to get to know yourself. Use your tribe. When I say tribe, family connections. Uh, could be your tribe at work, right? Could be the analyst next to you who's noticing that, you know, Josh is just really angry all the time. He used to be this positive monkey. Like, you know, my partner, uh, one of the amazing things that uh, they will do is they will call me in when I start canceling my social events. Because that is a huge indicator of burnout for me. I find myself I'm gonna hide at home because, you know, if I'm burnt out, I don't want to be around people because that would make them, you know, they'd be mad at me and then I lose my friends and it's a vicious cycle. So when I say use your tribe, you also need to open that door for them. So go to your team, go to your friends and say, hey, really respect you. I know that you love me and care about me. Let me know if you see these things, right? Invite them to do that because it can be really hard to look at your friend and be like, I think your mental health sucks. <laughs> I mean, but we've opened that door. Uh, and the last thing I wanna talk about is where possible, prepare while positive. Don't get ready for the hurricane after the hurricane hits. Because now you're like, well, I don't know, I'm gonna drink the water from the sewer and we're gonna figure it out. With mental health, prepare when you have or you're in upswing or you're with your tribe and you're on a positive note. This way, when you find yourself sliding down, when you find yourself in those situations where you feel that burnout coming on, you're, you've got some preparation. 
Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what I think about and what I do for preparation there. I have a recommendation. I do wanna touch on the three things for organizational. So if you lead a team out here, do these three. Like know the common signals. There's a bunch of research out there. Build that psychological safety. So open that door for your team. Know that they can come to you at any point and say, I'm not doing well, boss. And know the tools and connections that your company has for that. Um, huge shout out for Microsoft. They have an amazing mental health program here. Right? You get like 12 free sessions. You, it's very easy to call and get a hold of somebody. So they're taking it seriously. They're not the only one. I'm just, they're one that I know of. Um, so, but organizationally, way more to talk about there, different place, different time. When I say prepare, build your go bag, right? So people have the concept of a go bag. It's the, something gone wrong, pick it up, let's go. Have this ready, have this prepared. I literally have a physical container that is my burnout go bag. When I open that go bag, guess what that is? It's a signal that I might be in, headed towards burnout. So I get to take a, an actual physical signal for me. And in there, this is just an example for me, right? When I talk about affirmation cards, they're letters from myself to me. Hey, Josh, do you remember that time that you did that really cool thing and you wrote GDPR for Azure? You're better than you think, right? You can have your friends write affirmation cards. Something that reminds you in that moment when you're like, the world sucks and this is terrible, that there is light and you have done amazing things. You all are amazing people. You truly are. Like, this industry doesn't let mediocrity survive. A couple other things that I want to call out. For me, noise canceling headphones are key, especially in our uh, unified work environments, if I call them the, the nice way. Uh, I have friends and coworkers that I work next to that are wonderful people, but if I am in, in a bad cycle or bad mental state, I need noise canceling. I need something that lets me disconnect that audio intake. Um, favorite non-alcoholic beverage. I know some of you are like, come on, whiskey's gonna win. Yes, I'm all about the whiskey. But in the moment when you're having the struggles or potentially heading into a burnout state, introducing alcohol or introducing different narcotics may not be the right decision, right? See, I see the people pointing at each other, and I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, this is your tribe. Your tribe's calling you in. They're like, uh-huh, that whiskey. Um, favorite photos? Tissues, because, you know, you might have seen me getting choked up up here a little bit. This is an emotional topic. And imagine just in the state, you may need it. The last three, uh, so for number for a counselor, if you do not have a mental health counselor yet, find one, or at least have the number to access one. The last three are very personal for me. I put my favorite recipe for soup and it reminds me, Josh, get off your ass, stop ordering pizza, and go make your harvest soup. Take care of yourself, you matter. You matter. You are here and you're worth that investment of time. The simple workout, and when I say simple, it's like, all right, I got my resistance bands, and it isn't bench pressing ADK, like, it's just something to get the body moving. And my, my favorite item, and I recommend it for everyone, have a break glass plan for a getaway, right? So whatever you need to go get away. If it's a cabin in the woods, you put the money in there, you put the map, you put the directions, like whatever you need. One of, so mine, I have a hotel that I know and I change my walls, right? So sometimes just changing your walls is enough. So my challenge for you all is you know, to take this and take this concept and, and check yourself. Like, are you prepared? And because we are our community, Check with your community. Are they prepared? Like this, I'm staring at a room full of people at a burnout talk, and again, 
you're not here because you're bored. Like this is a huge issue in our space. I'm done losing friends to suicide. I'm gonna leave you with the organizational number because obviously uh, I wouldn't be an executive director if I didn't give you a number with quotes. Um, so uh, according to uh, VMware's Global Threat Index, uh, almost 70% of folks who have experienced burnout or are in burnout are about to leave their job. I know I left my job seven years due to burnout, seven years ago, um, and has hence come through recovery, and it's been great. But this is something that impacts both personal mental health and our ability as a community and our ability as a business to handle our work and handle our needs. Um, resources at the end here. Uh, really want to thank you all for, for coming to a frank discussion on a mental health topic. I want to pause now. I know where are we at? Yeah, we've got about seven minutes, which is on target. Questions, comments, stories, please. So for everyone in the room, uh, what he's saying is the power of no. Setting your boundaries, right. right? We do not have to say yes to everything, even if no one will pick up that ball. And you said you had one other? So uh, for everyone else, thank you very much. What he was saying was the invincible fallacy, right? The, the hey, I can do that 20-hour day. Hey, I don't need to sleep. What's not sleeping for three days? I'm, I'm a goon. I don't need sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'll be a dead goon. And our industry for a long time bred that. They bred the rock star. Right, you got to be a rock star to succeed. Your brand better be that you're the you're the person that's always there, 24/7. Because if not, you're not going to become a principal. Now that's changing, but it takes years for us to get that out of our mind and out of our training. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, please. So, uh, he's, he's saying an observation he has made, and he's asking me an informal question. Josh, who is the most important person in my organization? And I know the answer he wants. And my heart is like, yeah, I know that answer. And my brain's like, well, obviously, that's the most junior person because they're the person we can build. Yeah. <laughs> but agree, ensuring that you know that the most important person in your organization and the one that you can most impact for self-care and most impact is yourself. Thank you. It is, yeah. I didn't know that, so. <laughs> um, oh, Chris. Um, just something a mentor of mine said that changed my perspective. Because as Josh knows, I am absolutely great at setting reasonable and healthy boundaries and always doing self care excellently. Um, but I had a mentor who told me, "You need to give your organization the gift of failure." And it it changed what he's like. If you do everything, if you catch all the balls before they drop, if you're always the one there. When you burn out, because you will, your organization will take longer to recover. They won't be as resilient. You 
you are actually doing damage to your organization by being a rock star. Because it's just like, what do you think happened to rock stars? How many people do we know that were rock stars in the 70s that you know, <laughs> are alive and healthy and again setting absolutely s smart boundaries and living healthy lifestyle choices, right? So yeah. it's something that was really profound to me to kind of change the way I thought about it. I thought I was yeah. doing them a favor by being the one catching all the balls and always yeah. there and the whole world rests on me. Yeah. So for, for everyone in the audience, um, the statement around giving the gift of failure was the quote I heard, which was allowing not everything is going to get caught. And if you keep catching everything, the expectation is you're going to catch everything until you are buried. So, uh, on the organizational side, and the question is, as leaders, and I'm going to qualify the word leader here. I don't care if you're an HR manager or you're the best red teamer on the force. You're a leader in your own way. People look up to you. The question being, how do we help new people or just our, our tribe and our crew manage and avoid burnout? Um, and I'm going to go back to that one, the... You know, we talk about psychological safety, so opening the door for conversation. So like we did here. Uh, a lot of you have just spoken up in front of a room of 60 strangers around mental health topics. Hell yeah. Do more of that. Two, be that example. If I don't take a vacation as a leader, what are my juniors going to think? Work. Work more. Work more. Oh, if I lose vacation days at the end of the year, what are my people going to think? They're going to assume an expectation. Even if it's just, you know, things happen, I like to work, yay. If I'm sending emails at 3 AM, what are my people going to think? Be the example. All right. Oh, we have time for one more. Go ahead. It's, we chose our theme this year very specifically. It's been a hard run for this year. And I mean it. We've seen friends rift. We've seen friends lost. But we're still here. And I'm grateful for each one of you being here for taking this time and taking this time on this topic. So thank you all. If you have any questions, find me around. I'll be the one running around like a chicken with head cut off, but thank you.